So today I'm gonna to tell you about what gear I use to make my YouTube videos. Hi everybody, my name is Zach. I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that the only thing that you need to make videos on YouTube is something that records video. It could be your iPhone, it could be, I don't know, a GoPro, like whatever you have to make videos with can be the thing to get you started on YouTube. That is one of the amazing things about YouTube. It's not so much about what gear you're using to make videos, it's about you <laughs> and your personality and your experiences and the fact that you are creating value for me, for us as the viewer um, by making videos here. And then of course, like as you grow and you get bigger and you get more subscribers, maybe you'll graduate to bigger cameras, more expensive things, microphones, all of that stuff. But just keep in mind that all of the stuff I have is just like a lot. It's just for YouTube, it's none of it is necessary. I have it mostly because I have a photography and videography business and it's a part of my full-time job. So I use this stuff all the time for gigs and for work. Um, and it just happens to also be great for making YouTube videos and upping the production value of my channel. Um, but obviously like I'm still learning and <laughs> so, you know, even with all this stuff, my videos are far from perfect. So I'm gonna separate this video into four different categories, sound, lighting, video, and post-production. And I'm just gonna show you some of the tools that I use to make the videos that I make. So let's talk about sound. Right now I'm talking into the Rode pod mic. So that's this guy, it's on the Rode pod mic arm. So this is just clamped onto my desk um, and the arm is completely adjustable. But I've loved the sound of this mic. You just put in an XLR cable into the bottom. In this case, it's into the camera because I'm filming with my cinema camera. So it goes right into the camera, but before I had that camera, I had been using this. This is the Zoom H4n Pro. This is just a little audio recorder. It has an actually really beautiful mic on the front. I've been using this to record our singers at Opera Santa Barbara recently, but it also has two XLR inputs. So you can actually record two XLR inputs at the same time into GarageBand. Um, but for, for my purposes of making YouTube videos, what I would do is basically just plug in an XLR in here into the pod mic. And then there's a USB port on this that plugs into your computer. So basically you can just record from the pod mic to this to the computer and garage band and it works really really great. When you plug this into your computer the computer powers it but if you're using this on its own it does take two AA batteries which is kind of annoying. I wish it was chargeable or something but um, other than that this is a really really great recorder. It records to an SD card um, if you're using the device itself. Um, so that's also nice. This is the Rode VideoMic Pro. This is the first microphone that I used on my camera. It's just a hot shoe mic. It also has some really nice buttons on the back that allow you to decrease the inputs. It has a feature where you can sort of cut any sort of background hum of like highways or like ambient noise. I also have this. This is a Rode lavalier microphone and this is the one that actually just plugs it into your iPhone. So if you have the adapter here, it just plugs right into the iPhone and you can record into voice memos. This is really great if you're moving around. And then I also have something here. This is the Rode Wireless Go setup. So this is also a lav setup. One of them goes into the camera in the hot shoe. The other goes on the person. And then you can record the person with the lav mic directly into the camera. So you basically like eliminate the step of having to record to the phone and then sync and post. This way the audio is synced up to the camera right away. Really cool. You can also connect a lavalier mic to this so that you actually have a wired version or the actual pack itself has a microphone. I think I would recommend getting the lav mic because if you attach the, the actual thing like this, it makes your shirt really floppy and kind of awkward. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, so next is lighting. So typically if I'm just lighting myself, I'll just use a small light with a small softbox. I have this. So this is the Nanlite Forza 60B. 
It is the model where you can change the color temperature. It's quite a bright little light and this is perfect for my smallish space. So then I just put the softbox on a C stand and that's what lights me from the desk. So this just sort of comes up like that and lights me and it's typically at a 45 degree angle um, just to get some nice wrap but have that contrasty kind of look. Also a lot of the time with lighting, I don't really need extra lights. Like right now I'm just lighting myself from my giant window in my bedroom. Um, and I find a lot of the time when I'm making YouTube videos, it's just fine to use natural light. But if I am recording something late at night here at my desk, as you've seen, I will use that Nan light as my light source. So now if you watch this channel, this is probably gonna be your favorite part, but this is the cameras. And this is where I'm gonna talk about my newest purchased, <laughs> purchased, purchased, my newest purchased. Okay, so up here on the wall is a little shelf that has all of my camera gear. So I've got the X-Pro3 and a few Fujifilm lenses the EOS R, the EOS R6, my Canon EF lenses. And then filming right now is the Canon EOS C70. I'm gonna roll some footage from earlier in the day when I tried to make this video and then decided it was not good enough, um, where I actually was holding the C70 and talking about it so you can get an idea of how big it is. It's a chunky camera, but for a cinema camera, it is pretty small. Um, you can see it here compared to my EOS R. It's actually not terrible in terms of size or weight actually. For what it is, it's a relatively light package and I love that about it. So I've made actually the past couple of videos on the C70. Starting I think with the responding to comments video and then the video about inspiration those were made on the C70 and you probably didn't even notice. And that's gonna be the point of what I'm gonna say is like, I didn't upgrade to a C70 for image quality. Um, I don't think anybody should do that if they already have an R6 or an R5 because the images that I'm getting out of the R6 are just as good as the C70. Um, the reason I decided to go with a cinema camera, which is something that I didn't really think I would ever buy, but I've just been doing so much video work recently. Um, like for the opera, I'm now the DP there, which is a role that I've like basically created for myself. But um, so we're just filming concerts every week and I'm also getting gigs with other local arts nonprofits. And so I just, I felt like I needed a dedicated cinema camera, a dedicated video camera to do some of the work that I, am doing now just because of the workflow it offers the functionality it offers the features it offers it has built-in nd filters it has these xlr inputs you can record 4k for long periods of time you can do dual recording so you can record 4k and proxies at the same time the c70 has the rf mount um, even though i don't use rf lenses yet i think i might in the future so there are a lot of pros to it. I thought for a long time about getting the C100 because it's a really reasonable price, but I just decided like if I was going to get into the cinema camera thing, I should just get a camera that shoots 4K and just go all out. So that's pretty much what I did. And this is an entry level camera. It's just a, uh, it's a sickening amount of money to pay for a camera. I'm always saying on this channel, do you really need this? Do you really need this? Do you really need this for the work that you're doing? And can I answer yes, I really need this about the C70? I don't know. Am I doing enough video work to warrant having it? Yes, definitely. But do I actually, actually need it? It's a hard question. And so like, that's kind of why I've been like, Ugh, I don't want to talk about like getting this camera because I don't want people to think that they need it because you don't need it. Like, it's just, if you're doing a bunch of video work, it will make your life so much better to have this. Um, and you know who you are, like if you're getting paid for this work, if you're getting a lot of it, thankfully by the grace of whatever, like I've, I've made enough money this month, mainly from one big gig to pay the camera off plus some, which has been just, I've been so grateful for that because like I was confident that I would be able to pay it off with the work I was doing, but um, I 
I'm just really happy that 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 happened already. So I don't have to worry about this big hole to, to refill basically. But anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about the other more reasonable cameras for making YouTube videos. So last year, right as I was starting this channel, I was using pretty much exclusively this camera. This is the EOS R. I love this camera still. I still think that this is a really fantastic, fantastic camera. It takes amazing 4K video. It's a beautiful photography camera. Really love this, love this camera a lot. Um, I mean, back when I started making YouTube, I had the 5D Mark IV, but I just was not using it. I was only using this because, you know, it has the flip out screen, it has the EVF, it has these amazing video recording options. It's just, it's a very good camera. But now I have the R6. So this is, in my opinion, an upgrade over the EOS R. Um, I t made a whole video about it that, that you guys have probably seen, but if not, you can watch it here. But I love this camera. This camera is amazing. It's incredible for photography and incredible for videography, even better than the EOS R. The 1080p is gorgeous. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal camera. And this, either of these, are really incredible for YouTube. But again, they're not what you need to get started on YouTube. They are just something to maybe upgrade to later on when you're getting serious about it or, or you know, whatever. The reason that they're great for YouTube is because they're relatively small and light. I mean, they're not that light. When you put an EF lens on this, it's kind of heavy to blog with, honestly. But as far as like portability goes, you can take them with you, maybe bring a tripod so your arm doesn't fall off. The R6 also has IBIS in it, so that can help sometimes if you're getting like steady, trying to get steady shots handheld, or you know, even if you're vlogging, it can kind of help. Um, it's not the end all be all, it's not like having a gimbal, but it does help. But they have these nice articulating screens so that you can see yourself when you're filming. You can attach a mic up here that goes right into the camera. They're really, really great for vlogging. I would typically vlog on my 24 millimeter L lens from Canon, the one that's filming me right now on the C70. Uh, that's basically the only, the only lens that I use for making these videos with my Canon cameras. If you had like a zoom lens, that might be better for you if you're vlogging or making a lot of videos, but I just have the, pri the primes. So that's what I use, the 24, and I love the look of it. It's just wide aperture, so it lets in a lot of light and you get that nice separation. It's just, it's really nice, really, really love it. The R cameras, the C70, these are cameras that I'm making videos with uh, for my work and for YouTube. I also have like various accessories like SD cards and I have the two to five stop variable ND from Peter McKinnon. Um, and I also have a step up ring. So basically I can use the ND filter on my 24 millimeter lens because it's a 77 millimeter uh, filter thread, but then I have an adapter to allow that to also work on 72 millimeters so I can attach it to my 135 and my 50. So that's that's cool. It's an excellent, excellent tool to have if you're shooting video. Or recently I've been doing a lot of photos with show s slow shutter speeds, which it's also very good for. But I know this video is about making YouTube videos. So I do use the ND filter if I'm outside. But you know what's something that sucks is I dropped my 24 mil lens the other day onto this chair and like it was amazing. It didn't scratch the front element, but it did like ding the the filter thread. And so now the, the ND filter won't fit on the lens. It won't screw onto the filter thread. So if anybody knows how to fix that, let me know. Luckily the C70 has built in ND filters. So um, it's not that big of an issue, but uh, I was so bummed. So let me know if you know how to fix that. All right, so we've talked about sound, about lighting, about my cameras, about some camera accessories. So now we need to talk about post-production. So basically, all of my videos are edited on my 2018 iMac, which I'll throw the specs up on the screen here so you can see. And I edit them in Premiere Pro. And so basically, I create a folder very similar to the way I create folders for my photo shoots. I create a folder for my videos, and then I will just edit in Premiere Pro. I use a combination of the mouse and the trackpad for this to edit in my timeline. And as far as playback goes, I listen back on my AirPods Pro 
or on my gnarly pair of Bose headphones that are due to be replaced, but I just haven't coughed up the cash to replace them yet. I also have an iPad Pro that I sometimes will use to make videos, whether it be like editing on iPad, or I'll use Procreate to sort of draw little designs or arrows or words or something that will be overlaid into my videos. So that's a really great tool for doing stuff like that, but it's it's kind of rare that I do that. So I think that that's pretty much it. Um, I know it's a lot of stuff, and as I said at the beginning, like you don't need any of that stuff to start. You literally just need your phone. Like this is all you need to get started, or anything that records a video, because all we care about is you and your experiences. <laughs> so. If you're ready to get started on YouTube, you can literally get started right now. You can make a video about anything you own. Just think about something you own, talk about it, tell us why you like it, why you got it, how has the experience been, how has it held up. For instance, this watch. It's a Scoggin watch. I bought it about a year ago. It looks really beautiful. I love the color. I love the fit. The watch face is big and bright. I can see the time very clearly. It keeps time excellently. It was a hundred bucks. It came really quickly. I love the packaging. Here's what the box looked like. Literally, you can tell us all of that and you can film it on your iPhone. One of the first videos that I made that got over a thousand views was my video on my Warby Parker glasses. <laughs> And I just was like, oh, I just got these Warby Park glasses. I'm gonna talk about them. And people loved that video. And I was like shocked. My girlfriend was like, oh my God, why are people watching this video? But people really liked it. And it was super simple to make. And you can literally do that right now with your iPhone. Just get some footage of you talking about something that you own or something you have bought or something you did. Um, tell us about that thing. Tell us about your experience. That's what we care about. So. Anyway, small tangent, but I hope that that helps you not feel so overwhelmed by all of this stuff because it's a lot of stuff that I'm very grateful to have and use. I love using, you know, I'm like, I'm a gearhead. I'm like everybody. I like gear. I like talking about gear. I like watching videos about gear, but you know, don't let that stop you from getting into the game. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you are new here, consider subscribing and say hi in the comments. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to see you in the next video. Thank you, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Love is free.